The stands are still empty for now, but the FA Cup returned in style. Over the wall. Oh, brilliant. A chance for three. And it was never in doubt, was it? 40 ties, bags of goals, and no shortage of drama. The first round didn't disappoint. So he's going to take the shot on, and it's a brilliant effort. It sneaks in. It's gone in. What a fine header. This weekend, 26 league clubs and 14 non-league teams are 90 minutes away from round three, and possibly the match of their lives. And this time he finds the day. Welcome to the Emirates FA Cup preview show. Coming up, top of their class after winning at Wigan, can Chorley make the grade against Peterborough? When you've got um, a group of people that you, you're leading and you're trying to inspire and trying to get the best out of, confidence goes a long, long way. So I feel like that's how you get the best out of people. We relive one of the great FA Cup underdog stories with a veteran striker. After the game in the dressing room and suddenly it goes deathly silent and in, in walks Mourinho and, you know, you could have heard a pin drop. After years of decline, Stockport have an owner with grand designs. Simon Wilson, director of football, wrote a plan that I felt like I could believe in, and it was championship in seven years. Kings Lynn is a town rich in history. Now its football club are writing their own chapter. We're enjoying the ride and uh, we're, we're going to see how far we can take it. And the questions don't amuse everyone in our FA Cup quiz. Who, wrote, who writes these? The first round marked several milestones for Chorley manager, Jamie Vermiglio. Who's got a hole, he's got beyond the goalkeeper here, and he scored! Delight for Jamie Vermiglio and his staff. It was a fantastic achievement. It was my 100th game against Wigan Athletic, my hometown club. My little boy supports them. My granddad was a season ticket holder. It not only means that we've got a great second round tie, it also means that we're able to sustain what we've got at this club beyond Christmas period. I went home and I walked the dog, I spoke to my little boy, who was my best friend at the time because he told me that he now supports Chorley, and then get myself ready for school the next day. So I'm the head teacher at a large primary school in, in Warrington called Lock and Stumps Community Primary School. We've got nearly 400 children on roll. Come on, get close. Get close. They're quite high-pressure jobs. There's a lot of accountability with both. You know, here it's all about the results. If the results aren't going well, then you feel the pressure of that. And similarly, the head teacher, massive responsibility. And it's a results-driven business as well. You know, those children have got to make progress. You can only catch it with one hand. It's nice to have a football manager as a head teacher because it's nice to chat to him about football. He's funny and he talks a lot about Charlie. You're trying to please a lot of people. You're trying to do the right thing. Um, you know, but hopefully I've shown over a period of time that, that I, can, I can manage that, but of course you can't do that without the support of the, the good people that I've got around me. And I try not to think too much about football until, until the end of the day, but then once sort of six o'clock comes, I make my way here, check to see what missed calls I've got, phone as many players and agents and whoever else that I need to call back as I can before I get here, and then into the, into the session, really. Jamie's a really good guy and he, I think he's a great manager. Um, he's one of, the, one of the few managers that's fully believed in me. Come on, push, 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 push. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell he's got head teacher in him. But uh, yeah, no, he's, um, I think he's a good, good manager to have. His man management skills are good. Um, he's always communicating with me. Um, wants to know how the lads are getting on and stuff like that. I've obviously been a teacher who speaks well, motivates us well and uh, does his research on other teams. So yeah, he's good. One of the most significant team talks of Vermiglio's career came at the DW Stadium, with Chorley 2 0 down at the break. I think the red card just before half time sort of made us believe a little bit more, you know, and the gaffer sort of came in and said, Boys, you know, like, it's a great opportunity, 2 0 down, you know, just go out, express yourself, they're down to 10 men, and just see what you can do. When they had the man sent off, and the way that they walked in, they looked a little bit. Well, they looked a bit subdued as they walked in. I don't know why, but you know, we came out all guns blazing and, and in the end we got the result that I felt that the performance deserved. I did when I got home. I, I read the abundance of text messages and WhatsApp messages that I got and I even managed to have a look through Twitter because our uh, goalkeeper coach, Greg Dutson, managed to, to tweet a few things and it, um, I think they went, went viral in the end. Now there's nothing but the best. A lot of 
the, the children and parents watched it. Just said it was a, a brilliant game to watch and you know edge of the edge of the seat stuff. So they were made up the kids and there's a lot more Chorley supporters now in, in Warrington than there's been before. And next up for Chorley, the second highest ranked team in round two, Peterborough. I don't think we could have got a tougher draw. Uh, top of the league one flying. Uh, got a good home record. Um, it'll be be a difficult task, but say if, if we can do it at Wigan and we stick to a game plan and all the lads play as well as they can do, then we, we do believe we've, we've got a chance. I get asked a lot about uh, children and players and how they compare, and they do compare a lot. When you've got um, a group of people that you're, you're leading and you're trying to inspire and trying to get the best out of, confidence goes a long, long way. So I feel like that's how you get the best out of people. You get the best out of kids that way, best here, but the kids cause me less problems and less hassle. Fourteen non-league clubs will take part in the second round, including eighth-tier Marine. The Mariners reached this round for the first time in 28 years after beating League Two Colchester United on penalties. They now face sixth-tier Havens and Waterlooville. They've done it! And the biggest story, biggest upset of this season's competition has come here. Elliot Toronto's late winner helped fellow eighth-tier side Canvey Island to a 2-1 win over Banbury in the first round. It's an all-non-league tie for the Gulls next as they face National League Boreham Wood. Brackley Town meet Tranmere Rovers of League Two, hoping to get into round three at the third time of asking. The non-league side came through a six-goal thriller with Bishop Stortford and won on penalties. And it's Brackley into round two. My goodness, they've done it the hard way. Oxford City will appear at this stage for the second time in three years. They're managed by the former Leicester and Manchester City midfielder, David Oldfield. And there will be a new face in the dugout at Mansfield Town. Former Derby and Sheffield United manager Nigel Clough has taken over at the One Call Stadium. His first cup tie will be against Dagenham and Redbridge. Remember me, John Stead. Started off my career at Huddersfield Town. Went to Blackburn Rovers, Sunderland, Sheffield United, Derby County, Ipswich Town, Coventry City, Bristol City, back to Huddersfield, Bradford City, Oldham, Notts County, and now finally I'm here at Harrogate Town. I guess my favourite FA Cup memory would have to be beating Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in 2015 with Bradford City. It was round four of the FA Cup, Chelsea were flying high at the top of the league, five points clear, unbeaten at home for nearly a full season, and us, Bradford City, a League One club. I don't think anybody gave us a chance of going down there and pulling off the unthinkable. And they had a strong side, the likes of Aspilicueta, uh, Salah, Drogba, Fabregas, Cahill, Petr Cech, you know, a real array of top-class players. Once Chelsea took the lead and then scored a second, you know, in quick succession, we, we were obviously worried. They've walked that one in. 2-0 now for Chelsea. We had to try and show up shop a little bit and make sure that the score didn't become an embarrassment to ourselves. And then just before half-time, to, to get a goal was, was fantastic and just what we needed. He's dead. <laughs> and Chuck's been uh, beaten. He's never going to stop that. It's too powerful. It was one of, one of the top in my career, I think. Then in the second half, when Philip Moraes equalised, you know, they're on cloud nine. And from two down, they've made it 2-2. Absolutely ecstatic in front of the travelling away supporters, you know, nearly 6,000 Bradford City fans there. And, you know, we were thinking, can we get to the end of the game? Can we hold on to that scoreline and, and bring them back up to Valley Parade uh, in, a, in a replay? The third goal was, was quite special. Uh, managed to get a little bit of room to, to turn out and seeing Andy Halliday, you know, steaming in at the edge of the box, played the ball back to him, probably a little bit firmer than I should have done. Unbelievable! Andy Halliday to make it 3-2. Crowd are going mad. When they put seven minutes up on the board, again, we're looking at it like we need to just hang on. If we, if we concede, it's not a massive issue. We'd be delighted with, with a draw and, and bringing them back up the road, but... From, from then, we, we managed to do the unthinkable. 
we go and get the fourth goal. Got Cahill marking me. I managed to find some room once again and, and turned, faced him up. He sat the keeper down perfectly and just slotted it into the side. They can wrap it up here. They have no arguments now. Mark Yates has made it 4 2. Lovely goal. Every bit of it was just perfect. That's it. Everybody going mad. Mourinho claps straight away, but then disappears quickly. <laughs> Total credit and, and respect for them because they they deserve. But by by another side, uh, we must feel we must feel ashamed. A fantastic performance from the team from League One. So the six thousand supporters that were chanting, they were, you know, chants of easy. After the game in the dressing room and you know drinks flowing and suddenly it goes deathly silent. Um, we weren't really sure what was happening and, and in, in walks Mourinho and you know you could have heard a pin drop and he, he just said to the players you know fantastic you know you you deserve it you know nothing to do with us on the day it was all about your performance and he walked around the dressing room and shook every single player a member of staff's hand um, which was a real touch of class. His Stead was a fine finish by John Stead. I'm a little bit biased, obviously, because I was involved in this game, but I think he's got to be right up there with, with one of the biggest um, achievements from a lower league side, you know, pitting the wits against a, a top, top European club. Uh, it means the world to me, and, and as you can imagine, it's, it's right up there, you know, at the top of, you know, the highlights of my career. So now, at the age of 37, I'm here at Harrogate Town. It's been an amazing journey for the 18 months that I've been here. And in my first season, play a part in a, in a promotion winning season from the National League into the Football League for the first time in the club's history. Started the season fairly well. So for this season's FA Cup, after beating Skelmsdale in the first round, now we're up against Blackpool at home in the second round and from what I've seen over the last 18 months and the group of lads that we've got in this dressing room there's no reason why we can't go and do the business against Blackpool and then if we do pull a, a top side in the third round then I've got every confidence in my teammates that we can go and cause another upset. Anything is possible, we've seen that over the years. Still to come, the biggest game in Kingsland's history at Portsmouth. It was a good feeling to know that we can go and test ourselves again against high level opponents. And there are some brain teasers in our FA Cup quiz. No idea. <laughs> in January this year, businessman and lifelong fan Mark Stott bought Stockport County with big plans to get the club he loved back to where it once belonged. When the opportunity came along, it was it was very much looking at a club that was a sleeping giant and um, something that connected with me personally, but also I thought was a platform to do some great things both on the pitch and off the pitch. Simon Wilson, director of football, wrote a plan that I felt I could believe in and it was championship in seven years. Current manager Jim Gannon is a club legend and was inducted into Stockport's Hall of Fame. His playing days during the 90s were County's most successful period. I had 10 years service, was involved in two promotions as a player. Even if I hadn't played, I probably would have had an opportunity to get in the Hall of Fame as a manager with having two promotions and some great people in that Hall of Fame and uh, pleased to be part of it. Jim wanted three things. He wanted a, a full-time team, a training facility, a permanent one the club hadn't had for a long time and a decent budget. And we actioned all of that within a few short months. I mean, the training facility, the pitches were used when Man City won the Premier League in 13, 14. So it's great quality. Players have said to me that they drive into the car park here and they feel like a professional footballer. I mean, obviously this isn't in the Stockport Borough. We want something in the Stockport Borough, a purpose-built elite facility where Stockport County will train from for the next 20 years and, and plus, hopefully. Mark will have the ambitions to perhaps all go all the way to the championship, but I know that you've got to make those manageable steps. At the moment, the club is doing everything right to get us out of non-league into the Football League. I've enjoyed that journey as a player from the bottom of two to the top of the championship, and I'd love my players to enjoy that journey too under Mark's stop. 
Edgley Park's been transformed, a place that's had 100 years or plus of uh, Stockport County, but now looks like it's equipped for the future. I am excited about the football on the pitch. I'm really excited to see thousands of fans back in Edgley Park in a facility that everyone will be proud of. National League Stockport reached round two after beating League One Rochdale with a famous name on the score sheet. Well won by John Rooney, who gets his head up, and he's going to go for it here, and Bassett, who's not going to get there, remarkable goal! John Rooney from inside his own half, and he follows in the footsteps of his brother. It must run in the family. Yeah, I've tried a few times, or, you know, it's probably one out of so many will come off, and lucky for me, that one come off. I was sat on the bench, I thought, what's he doing there? And then all of a sudden you, you, you gobsmacked a little bit at the audacity to even try it, but then to execute it with sublime skill is just uh, brilliant. And I wouldn't be surprised that come May, when the final's being played, that they'll still be showing that goal. So it's one not just for John of Stockport, but for the FA Cup for this season. After multiple COVID-19 cases in the squad, County haven't played a competitive game for three weeks. I suppose in some ways we kind of like flipped it round and made it a positive in the sense of we had a, a long pre-season waiting for the season to open. We had a really tough opening 10 games. So we've used it as a kind of mid-season break, allowed people to sort of recharge batteries. We had a couple of injured players that got fit. So it's nice to go into this week with everybody really enthusiastic and a fully fit squad. They now face National League rivals Yeovil Town for a coveted place in the third round. You know, they've got some really good players there, experience. So, you know, they haven't started this season too well, but, you know, they'll be coming here trying to kickstart their season by knocking us out the FA Cup. So, you know, they need to win as soon as possible, but we need to make sure it's not against us on Sunday. For the finances to recoup some of the investment that we've made on the pitch, but also off the pitch this season, a good cup run would go some way to restoring the coffers, I suppose. We've got to be careful that we just play the game and not the occasion, but uh, yeah, it's a huge prize and reward waiting for us should we win this game. In 2005, the Cambridgeshire village of Histon was the setting for one of the great FA Cup shocks. Around the village itself, there was a real good cup fever. The team was full of confidence. We believe we could beat anyone. Postman Matt Langston was a member of the Histon side that faced Leeds United in the second round. This is the biggest day of their careers so far. We knew Leeds wouldn't fancy coming here. Conditions on the day helped us, but that's what the FA Cup's all about. I remember going up there in front of the Leeds fans and thinking, oh, it'd be nice to score. And it goes from Quinn and it's headed in! The next thing I knew, I'd got my head on it and it was I just saw it bounce almost on the line and just swept past the goalkeeper. Matt Langston, the postman delivers the opening goal for Histon. My mind went blank from there. It was just everyone was jumping on me. Real drama in the FA Cup. The story of the round is right here. Histon, the village team, not Leeds United out of the FA Cup. It really put the club on the map. Kings Lynn is a very historic medieval town. We've got the King John Cup, been there for over 800 years now. It was given to the town by King John. It's famous for its port and the industry that that brought to the, the town. And we're just trying to compete and, and do our own little bit of history now. The Norfolk town of Kings Lynn dates back to the 13th century, but its football club is a very modern addition. It's a new club, it was reformed in 2010, it had its hardships previously. It's been a very quick rise, but we're enjoying it. We're enjoying the ride and uh, we're, we're going to see how far we can take it. From where we've come from the last couple of seasons, we're trying to settle in the conference now. And, you know, the FA Cup, it's a magical competition and, you know, um, if you do well in it, you know, it puts, puts you right in the map. So we're trying to let people know from outside Norfolk where we are and, and what name we are. I know that everyone knows about Norwich being one city football club, and, uh, but we're, we're just down the road and we're trying to compete with them and, and make sure that people know about us as well. So it's, it's, it's a massive task, but we're, we're enjoying it. 
I've been watching it since I was about sort of five, six years old. Um, you know, playing in the garden, you sort of pretend you're in the FA Cup and that. So yeah, it was it was a good feeling to score a goal in it. It was a great moment for everyone involved in the club, from the players to the fans. And yeah, after the game, you know, we were having a lot of fun in the change room. We had the music on, and yeah, it was it was a great feeling to get into the second round for the first time. This weekend, Kings Lynn Town aim to make their own football history against a club with a rich FA Cup tradition. It's Portsmouth, twice winners of the competition, and the last time they did that was 2008. I was hoping for a big, a big team away, and, um, and when uh, Portsmouth ball come out, I was sitting there next to my dad, and we were saying, go on, uh, be the Kings Lynn, and when the ball come out, it was great. You know, it, was, it was a good feeling to know that we can go and test ourselves again against high-level opponents and uh, put on a good show for all the fans watching from home. To pull out Portsmouth was probably the biggest team in the draw, so it was like, poof, here we go, this is this is big time football, so uh, for little old Kings Lynn to be going there and, and trying to compete on that stage is fantastic for us. It's uh, probably the biggest game in the club's history, you know, playing against a side who have won the FA Cup twice before, um, you know, they're a big club trying to get back into the championship, um, yeah, it'll just be a great opportunity for us lads, you know, a lot of us haven't played in a stadium like that before, so it'll, it'll be a great opportunity and can't wait. We won't go in fearing the worst, we'll uh, go there with confidence and, and we believe in ourselves. We're a tight group and hopefully we can uh, stick together and, and do really well Saturday. We've had one surprise, uh, it'd be fantastic to do another one, it really would, but we're under no illusions, this is, this is no disrespect to Port Vale, but this is a massive step up for us. The chances are slim, it's going to be tough, but there's always that bit of hope, you never know. They should win the game nine times out of ten, but Saturday might be that one. Um, and we're going to go down there, give it a really good go, nothing to lose and everything to gain. The town houses one of England's oldest cups, but what chance Kings Lynn making an impact on football's most famous trophy? We've created our own little bit of history, this group of players. All we can do is go in there and perform and make the town proud of you know the efforts on the day and uh, walk out that stadium with a head held high. Finally, it's quiz time. Five questions to test your FA Cup knowledge. Ready? <laughs> I'll be telling about this. Question one. John Rooney scored a goal of the round contender in Stockport's 2-1 win over Rochdale. But how many times has his brother Wayne won this competition? Three. Four. Mm. Twice. Twice. Two. Uh, I'd say three. Three. One. Easy for John. Wayne has won the FA Cup with Manchester United once back in 2016. Question two, when Chorley manager Jamie Vermiglio is not on the touchline, he works as a headmaster. But which FA Cup winning club is associated with the term School of Science? A bit before my time, that. I've got no idea. Who, wrote, who writes these? I'll have a wild guess at Everton. Everton? Everton. Another easy one for boyhood toffee John, School of Science is often associated with Everton. Question three. Bradford are one of nine FA Cup winning clubs that John Stead has played for. Can you name two more? <laughs> Sunderland. Do you play for Sunderland? Sheffield United. Sheffield United? Sheffield United. Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Ipswich. Blackburn. Don't know. <laughs> Notts County. Notts County. Can't think. Who are the others? <laughs> Well, here they are, John. Huddersfield, Blackburn, Sunderland, Derby, Sheffield United, Ipswich, Coventry and Notts County were your cup-winning clubs. Question four. Ian Culverhouse has guided Kings Lynn into round two for the first time. But at which club did he make his name as a player? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. No, I'm not with that one. Norwich. Norwich? Norwich City. Norwich. Norwich. Correct, Ian is a Canaries Hall of Famer who played 369 times for Norwich City. And finally, the third round draw follows this weekend's action and sees Premier League clubs enter the competition, including Holders Arsenal. But who scored the Gunners' match-winning goals in the 2020 final? Watched it as well. 
Aubameyang. 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 Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Simple, Arsenal's two goals were scored by Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And with four out of five, we've joint winners, Jim Gannon and Adam Marriott. Take that. So I did all right then in the end. <laughs>